Hello, welcome to this week's Dividend Cafe. It's been a, a crazy week, really kind of the heart of earnings season uh, going on. We're up to now about 50% of the S&P 500 having reported earnings from the second quarter results. 74% uh, of companies so far have beaten in their earnings expectation and 72% have beaten in top line revenues. So it really explains why markets have been going well. I do expect that those numbers will come down a little bit, but again, still um, represented an acceleration of earnings, which is the primary driver of markets right now. Um, you know, we're filming this week here from our, our New York office that was recently opened. Actually, this is the, the view outside of the window where I've been working here this last week and throughout much of the summer. Very much looking forward to getting back to, to Newport Beach. Um, I absolutely love New York City, but um, you know we, uh, we, home is home, and, and I'm excited to get back. And the weather here, let's just say, um, is not quite uh, the beaches of Orange County as far as the humidity and heat go. But one thing about being here in the city during earnings season and around a lot of my analyst friends and other asset managers and so forth is there is a really contagious conversation about markets, about the economy, of course, particularly about corporate profits, and then, and then how these things are overlaid with the political scene, which everybody loves to talk about. And, and I will tell you that I feel um, an almost uh, immovable conviction right now that we are seeing the biggest decorrelation I've ever observed in my career between political volatility and market volatility, between political occurrences and news cycles and, and market activity and responses. Um, the, the shenanigans this week, very distressing to me, uh, the president um, attacking his attorney general by Twitter, uh, markets haven't even blinked. Uh, we could go all year long at different things that have moved. It's had absolutely no consequence. But what most of the conversations I'm having out here have been about, and what uh, most of the things that are driving markets have been about, are company results. You see companies uh, innovatively uh, increasing their profit margins. You see companies aggressively expanding top line revenues. And you see a valuation construct that is not proven to be as severe as people expected. So consequently, markets have, have been reasonably benign. Uh, that's not to say all is rosy. Volatility is so low that it frankly creeps me out sometimes. I don't want apathy or complacency to ever kick in. Uh, credit spreads are so low that we think that there is a uh, numbness around, around debt and around leverage, neither of which are excessive, but neither of which we think are being respected either. So overall, it is not an irrational market in any way, and we still have a few weeks to go here for more earnings results, but the stories that we're seeing out of company bottom-up response are very positive. Um, at DividendCafe.com this week, which I would really love for you to read and check out, you see a chart about all the central bank balances uh, on their, uh, their balance sheet, what they've done in terms of asset purchases. You see this explosion of bonds on their balance sheet that if indeed normalization is to take place, have to come off. You have to see a decreasing of balance sheets through time to get to a place we would call more normal. And it's a monumental task ahead. So there are plenty of catalysts that can disrupt this little Goldilocks moment we're having right now of not too hot, not too cold. But overall, um, I do believe that it is a great time to be owning equities, not only because they're going higher and everyone feels good, but you have low inflation, you have global markets that are all behaving better than they were a year, year and a half, two years ago. Um, and of course, corporate earnings here in the United States going higher, which is more important than anything. Would we like to see tax reform get done and get done the way we want it and get done quickly and smoothly? Well, of course we would. Would we like there to be a little more maturity coming out of the White House? I, I can tell you that I would, yeah. But overall, as far as the investment thesis goes, we think that this is the right space to be balanced, cautious, aware, 
yet not take away the opportunity of continued movement and equities. Um, we still want to be selective, as we've said all year long. We think that there are spaces that when damage comes into markets are likely to be more damaged than others. But we're really uh, pleased with our results and pleased with how this environment is shaped up for capital markets this year. I'm going to leave it there. I've gone on long enough. Uh, but if you do come to New York, I'll be here a few more weeks. We'd love to see you. And uh, other than that, um, reach out. Any questions? And, and thank you for listening to David and Cafe.